I now want to jump into the bids. So I've showed you the general opportunity where we're just selling something to an end customer direct. Now I actually want to show you um, what a bid would look like or, or what, what it would look like if we were selling through a third party contractor, essentially. So in this, I'm going to open up my opportunity here. And as you can see, the opportunity is, the, is almost identical to what we had on the selling direct to an end customer opportunity. The one thing that differentiates this opportunity is the ability to manage bids to various contractors. So at the top here with our opportunity record, as you can see, this is dealing with the building of a Walmart. So the opportunity record represents the building of the Walmart. The bid record, which you see here where my mouse is, represents the actual record in which um, it represents the third party contractor that is bidding on the Walmart. And then the bid line represents the various products that we are quoting to the to the contractors that are bidding on the overall Walmart. So it will start to, I know that's a little bit confusing, but it will start to make a lot more sense as I go through this. So as you can see, in this case, the buyer is Walmart, the seller is contractor one because contractor one is selling to Walmart and you're providing contractor one with the estimate. And in this case, the primary contact that we're dealing with at um, is Homer Simpson for this opportunity. So that's who the quote's going to, uh, and that's who's actually bidding on the Walmart itself. So I'm not gonna go through this other information because I went through it on the other opportunity. It's very, very similar. Um, I actually, I'm gonna jump right over to the bid section. So as you can see here, we have um, contractors. So contractor one is actually bidding on this Walmart. So contractor one represents the third party that is selling to or bidding on the Walmart project that we're quoting to. So we have a unique bid ID. We have a bid type. So is this reseller consignment? Is this reseller non-consignment? Is this direct customer? Uh, we have a value and the value is actually totaled up from all the bid lines or the products that we're selling to the contractor who's bidding on the Walmart. We have the subcontract that we're, excuse me, the subcontractor that we're obviously selling to. We have an end customer, which is Walmart. We have the opportunity that this bid is related to because obviously this is in a hierarchy of opportunity bid than bid line. Um, we have an expected close date. So when do we expect this bid to close? Which sales rep is dealing with this specific bid? Because you may have multiple contractors coming to you for the same Walmart bid. You may have different estimators or different sales reps that are managing each of those contractors. So I may manage contractor one normally and Steve may manage contractor two, um, but they may be bidding on the same thing. So we need to be able to identify different reps for those different contractors and the different bids. We have a uh, sales rep's email. We have a customer contact. We have a uh, the price list. Which price list are we pulling from? So pricing A is the one that we use for the last example. In this case, we're pulling off a general price list. And then we have win loss. So this is essentially, who won? So if we come here and contractor one won this bid, we would mark that as one. If they lost it, we would mark them as lost because we wanna start tracking our contractors. We wanna start creating dashboards that say, which one of our contractors is winning the most? Because if you have a contractor that's winning 90% of the bids that you quote them on, but you have another contract that's only winning 10% because they're getting greedy and they're marking their products up, you may wanna give preferred pricing to contractor one because he's gone out and he's winning 90% of those deals. You want to give him the tools he needs to make sure that he secures that business for both himself and him securing business for himself is securing business for your organization. So that's one reason why you'd want to do that. So that's a little bit on the bid. Now I'm actually going to jump into the bid lines, which is the, the products that we're, that we're estimating for contractor one to sell to Walmart. So I'm going to open up one of those bid lines now. So this is a bid line for hypothetically here, a bolt, a uh, bolt one that we're selling to uh, for the plans, uh, the architecture plans for, for Walmart. We obviously have a, sorry, hang on one second. Oops. So let's say for example, we're, we're quoting this estimator, a ductwork package for the ductwork that's gonna go into this Walmart project. Um, so as you can see, we have a unique identifier here. So let's say ductwork is the identifier for this uh, for this bid line. We have a product ID, which in this case would be the aluminum ductwork package. So in the back end, you can have individual products, you can have product bundles, and you can have product families. So in this case, the aluminum ductwork package is a product bundle with multiple products underneath that product bundle. So we're actually quoting a bundle of multiple products here. 
Um, we have a price list, as I mentioned before. So in this case, general price list. Then this is where we have our standard costs. So how much does it cost us to manufacture this aluminum ductwork package? So let's say it costs us $1,000 to manufacture this aluminum ductwork package. And the standard price that we sell this package for is $1,500. So we're looking at about $500 margin here, and I'm gonna save that. But the, cut, the, cut, the contractor comes back to us and says, I'm not gonna win with the price of $1,500. I need you to reduce that price to $1,300 per ductwork package for me to win this deal. So then the rep's gonna enter $1,300 here is the requested price from the, um, from the contractor who's bidding on the Walmart. As you can see, we have a disc, Oops, I gotta save that to update the record. As you can see, we have an updated, updated discount amount of $200, 1,500, subtract 1,300 is 200. We have a discount percentage. Um, we have a quantity of units that we're selling. So this person might need 10, uh, let's say they need 652, based on the architecture plans, they need 652 of these packages to build the Walmart which calculates a value, which we saw on the opportunity. What was the value of the opportunity? This is the field that it's pulling from. So we have $847,600, which is the quantity, obviously uh, multiplied by the requested price because we want to see what we're getting at the requested price. Then we have uh, customer request details and reason for special pricing. So the customer is looking for duct work for the Walmart package. Uh, we were too expensive. So you want to mark off why we're actually reducing the price. And in this case, we're going to say it was a competitive situation. So we had to reduce based off the competitive situation and the probability of winning at this price is 90%. So now I'm going to save that. Okay, so once we filled out all this information and we have this requested price of 1,300 and how much money we're losing at this requested price and all that good information, we actually have a, uh, a review process. So as you can see, this requested price has not been removed, uh, reviewed by management team or approved by management team. So a manager comes in here and may look at the price and say, I like the price. We still make margin on this. This is good. I'm gonna approve the price at 1,300. And that's still gonna give us a margin of $23.08 per product. And we have an alternative approved price. Uh, if if you want, if the manager says that's too low, I'll go in at one thousand four hundred. We can have an alternative approved price here if you'd like. Uh, um, and then obviously, as the opportunity pushes through, it will go. Uh, the quote will go out at this price. For now, for the sake of this, we're going to leave it at the same. So we're going to say yes, that was approved. Um, and then once the once the approval person has finished approving. The field be set to this, they can say approved now that we've approved this. And the reason you see this little key beside the field is because it's a controlled field. That means that only a manager with the security role that applies to this field can change this field. So as an estimator, I can't go in and just approve my own estimates. It has to go through this controlled process in the system. I can also have my supply chain update me as to if we have the products that are necessary and they can approve. So let's say, for example, they say approved, we can meet deadlines and have the inventory to start. Um, and then we can, and if there was a bid change, so say, for example, all this has been approved and then a sales rep goes in and they change a specific data point in here and go to 1,200, for example. This will, the update field will change to yes because there was an update in the bid and it will show what the update was. And then the man, this field will automatically be split to required pending. Um, because now we need a manager to come through and approve this price again. So it doesn't let people play with the numbers even after the approval is done. It really keeps consistency across the, uh, the estimators, the organization, and the approval process. Last but not least, we can, we can track global inventory. Um, what do we have where? Uh, so that we can make sure that we have the inventory in the right place to ship to somewhere, whatever it may be. Um, I've even seen this done on product lines. So for example, they have the various product lines here listed here as opposed to the countries. And we configured the system to show how much of each product line or SKU that they had so that when they were estimating, they could quickly look at that and do an inventory check. 